Marilyn Manson is facing a protest at his show in Anaheim, California. This comes after a group of activists attempt to ban Marilyn Manson and any performance by an artist with mere allegations during a recent city council meeting. And you won't believe who was involved. By the way, I don't know if I had mentioned it, but my lawsuits are against my Brian Warner, who is known to the public as Marilyn Manson. I think everybody knows that name. Let's talk about this. On August 20th, a small group of activists attended a city council meeting in Anaheim, California, where they requested a resolution to ban any performer with serial allegations made against them. Allegations being the key word. The focus of their activism? Marilyn Manson. These activists, it turned out, were there to support his accuser, Bianca Elaine under the guise of protecting women and children at concerts, at least that is the messaging from this clip. I'm asking everyone to stop and think about the human beings that were and are tortured by alleged serial artists, especially those who were by the artists as children. We need to think of the children like me in the early 2000s as potential victims. They also shared a 200 plus page document called Sound Off to city council members, which allegedly details abuses in the music industry, including Kine's allegations made in her New York lawsuit. And I am the founder of the Female Composer Safety League. It was also one of the organizations who co-released the Sound Off report, which is the largest documentation of credible accusations of in the history of the music industry. While the city council meeting and upcoming protests are noteworthy, something else has caught my attention. But let me provide some essential background information for those unfamiliar with Kine's lawsuit and her allegations. This context will help you better understand the history behind Kine's initial allegations and the events leading up to the city council meeting and the protest in Anaheim, California. So if you want to learn more about the other Marilyn Manson lawsuits, including updates from this lawsuit and Marilyn Manson's lawsuit, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Initially coming forward as Bianca Elaine, Kine came forward with her allegations against Manson in February 2021, and she was not alone. Following Evan Rachel Wood's social media post on February 1st, 2021, Kine and several other women came forward with public allegations against Marilyn Manson by late January 2023. She escalated her allegations by filing a Jane Doe lawsuit in the state of New York. This led to several salacious media headlines as she now alleges a very different story when comparing her prior interviews and podcast episode. My sexual experiences with him didn't really begin until... And this is where people are going to start blaming me. <laughs> Nobody's going to blame you. Um, when I was about 19. That she was essayed and alleged other abuses leading into adulthood. Manson, through his attorneys, has publicly denied all of the allegations Kine has made in her lawsuit. But this brief overview covers her initial allegations, the start of her lawsuit, and brings us to today. Returning to the city council meeting, Bianca Kine was given around three minutes to address the council members, despite everyone else being limited to 90 seconds. She was one of six total speakers who discussed the sound off report, but notably, she was the only Marilyn Manson accuser present. Her message not only aligns with the first speaker relating to the safety of women and children, but we also heard echoes of the same sentiment expressed by the other speakers in attendance. Let's listen to a shortened version of her nearly three-minute speech. Hello, um, my name is Bianca Lankine. I didn't know that I would be crying already, but I am. Um, I stand before you today as a survivor of that occurred to me as a child when I was at a concert. The countless countless young women and girls, the stories of trauma and heartbreak just continue to echo a chilling truth that our concerts are not safe places. Personally, I was robbed of my innocence in a place where I thought music and unity should have reigned supreme. 
My scars are a constant and painful reminder of what happened to me when I was 16. For those who want to know further details of my abuse, um, it is public uh, document. It's been given to the city staff, um, and it out outlines the horrific suffered as not only a 19-year-old girl in New York, but a minor at 16 in Louisiana. And these lawsuits are ongoing at the moment. It is the time for the music industry to prioritize the safety of its young fans. Anaheim can lead the way, I believe, by impl implementing a comprehensive, very safe protocols at all venues, including the Honda Center. By the way, I don't know if I had mentioned it, but my lawsuits are against my Brian Warner, who is known to the public as Marilyn Manson. I think everybody knows that name. But I feel like it includes prohibiting the booking of artists with allegations, of, including that of minors. Despite presenting arguments for banning artists with what they termed serial allegations, there was no actual resolution or item for the council to vote on with Fox News LA reporting on this a few hours later that very same evening. With all of this in mind, why did I find this so interesting, at least in terms of why Kine and others are alleging to ban Marilyn Manson based on protecting not just women, but children? Well, it has to do with a statement by Manson's attorney, Howard Kane, when this lawsuit first came to light in January 2023 including the allegations made in Manson's own lawsuit against Evan Rachel Wood and her ex-girlfriend, Ashley Ilmagore. Quote, Brian Warner does not know this individual and has no recollection of ever having met her 28 years ago. He certainly was never intimate with her. She has been shopping her fabricated tale to tabloids and on podcasts for more than two years. But even the most minimal amount of scrutiny reveals the obvious discrepancies in her ever-shifting stories, as well as her extensive collusion with other false accusers. So how might this quote relate to Manson's lawsuit and counter-allegations? According to Manson's lawsuit between 2019 and 2021, Ilma Gore had multiple conversations with prospective accusers where she would claim an unreleased short art horror film from 1996 called Groupie, depicted CP, and that the actress unalived herself. By making these allegations that there was an underage actress in an unreleased film, it would amplify Evan and other women's allegations and make them more believable. So not only is there a potential indication that Kine might be one of these alleged recruited women, but the focus on allegations related to minors and child safety also aligns with what Evan Rachel Wood has been claiming. There have been allegations and uh, stories that have come out on the on the internet that involve I'm like a fluke. I didn't know that there were possibly other at the time. I didn't know that. In retrospect, especially when I found out about the alleged that have come forward and looking at the timeline and then but he picked you because you were young. He picked you because you were a child. He picked you because you were flat chested. Kine's case is particularly significant as she is currently the only public figure making allegations of this nature against Manson. However, the contradictory nature of her claims raises questions. The timing of these events, the council meeting, the upcoming protest, and the release of the Marilyn Manson unmasked documentary in Canada appears possibly coordinated to maintain public focus on these specific allegations. The protest is scheduled for Friday, September 6th at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California.